Good evening, everyone. Just wanted to welcome you to tonight's Sunday evening service of Laos Dios. Um, we trust that it's going to be an amazing service, that God's going to be moving. Holy Spirit will take over, and it's going to be an amazing time that we have around God's Word. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, tonight we just want to thank you for this time that we can spend, Lord, in your presence around your Word. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that we can openly and freely still discuss your word, still read your word, still pray. Thank you for that freedom. We praise you, Lord. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you will come tonight and just take over this meeting. It is your meeting. It's your service. You take over, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Take my tongue as a pen of a ready writer and just minister. I yield to you, Holy Spirit, spirit, soul, and body. And Lord, I just declare that in faith, Everyone under the sound of my voice will be touched, changed, set free, delivered, saved, healed tonight in Jesus' name. As your word goes forth under your anointing, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we give you all the praise, you all the glory, for you all the honor, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So, the message tonight is entitled... Let me get this out of the way there. There we go. Great. So the message is entitled Opportunities to Shine Our Faith, which is really just a nicer title for tests and trials. <laughs> I thought, let me just put something else in there instead of tests and trials, because whenever we hear the whenever we hear tests or a trial, we will either, oh no, wait a minute, I don't want to do this. But life is full of tests and trials. We know that. So, and let's learn what to do in a test and a trial. <clears throat> because they're not going to go away until we get to heaven. They're going to be with us. So let's learn what to do when we get those. Um, the scripture reference is from James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. And I want to read from the uh, Passion Translation, but then also from the Amplified Version. The Amplified sometimes puts it, puts it just very nice, um, clearer. Okay, so in the Passion Translation, it says, verse 2, My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up in you the power of endurance. And then as you, as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there's nothing missing and nothing lacking. Some powerful, amazing words over there. The Amplified reads, Consider it holy, Joyful, my brethren, whenever you are enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations, be assured and understand that the trial and proving of your faith brings about endurance and steadfastness and patience. Three things, endurance, steadfastness and patience. But let endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work so that you may be people perfect, perfectly and fully developed without any defects, lacking nothing. That's very, very powerful words. I'm going to read it again. That's our key verse. And, let, and then as endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there's nothing missing or nothing lacking. Just to uh, lighten the load a little bit, uh, I've got a little joke. Um, the doctor said to the patient, I have bad news. I've had bad news and worse news. The doctor said to the patient, I have, I've, I have bad news and worse news. Sorry. So the patient says, let's have it. So the doctor says, the bad news is that you only have 24 hours to live. The patient says, 
I can't imagine what could be worse than that. So the doctor says, I forgot to tell you yesterday. Now, we can laugh about it and uh, see it as funny, and it is, but um, the real meaning behind all of that is that we have all got tests and trials, sometimes good ones and sometimes not so good ones. They're not always very good. They Most of the time, tests and trials aren't that great. They, they're horrible. They're not nice. But we need them, and we'll see now why we need them. Our normal human reaction to any test or trial is to complain. That's the first thing. And that's human reaction. That's the sin nature is to complain. Why this? Why me? What did I do wrong? Now, here's an interesting tidbit as R.T. Kendall knows. Now, R.T. Kendall, he's, a, he's a, um, an, a veteran, a giant in the faith. He's still alive. He still preaches, but he's, he's I think he's 70-something or 60, yeah, 70-something. So he's a veteran in faith. Now, he says the book of James was written around 40 A.D. And it was the first that was written while the book of Matthew was written around 60 A.D. So James was written before Matthew. Yet Matthew is first in the New Testament. And James is almost near the end of the New Testament. And it's an interesting thing. That is the very first thing that James says to the church is consider it pure joy when you counter trials. That's the first thing when the book of James opens. Consider it joy when you go through trials. First book of the Bible, supposed to be. First verse. Quite interesting. I think God's trying to tell us something there. Now, it is a choice I need to make, just like I need to make a choice to praise, to worship, to pray, to read the Bible. It's a choice that I need to make to be joyful in a trial. I need to choose to consider the trial or the test a joyous occasion. Why? So that it will allow my faith to grow and strengthen and shine forth and thus bring glory to God. That's it. So that it will strengthen my faith and grow and sh shine forth to the glory of God that I will be able to do it. Now, when a trial hits my life, this is the process, according to James chapter 2. The trial proves that my faith is alive, or there would be no trial to start with, or a test. The trial brings out endurance and steadfast, steadfastness and patience in my life. Now, verse 3 once again says, For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up the power of endurance. Just like you will stir up water and make it all muddy. Um, faith that is tested is stirred up the power of endurance. There is power or dynamite in enduring. Ask any athlete, comrades, runner, a rower, or even the Ironman competition candidates and they will tell you the importance of endurance if you don't endure you're going to burn out before the race comes to an end you have to pace yourself that's the key in doing any competition uh, athletics or whatever uh, endurance now as my endurance grows even stronger it will release perfection into every part of my being by God's grace, until there's nothing missing and there's nothing lacking in my faith life, according to the Word of God. And that's all by the grace of God. We can't do it by ourselves. Now, the Amplified reminds us in verse 4, but let endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work. Don't stop it halfway. Don't go a little bit and stop and go and stop. Let it have its Full, you let it do a thorough work, a full play, so that you may be people perfectly and fully developed with no defects, lacking nothing. When you go to a gym and you only train the one part of your body with weights, the other part's going to be lacking, and you're going to see the difference. You're going to be strong on one side, weak on the one side. Same thing in our faith. Trials causes us to grow in grace like nothing else can or ever will. I'm going to read it again. Trials 
causes us to grow in grace like nothing else can or will. Trials sets grace and faith to work in our lives as it tests how strong you are spiritually. Now, God is giving you and me an opportunity when we go through a trial, putting us under the microscope, so to speak, to let you and me see how strong we are. He knows how strong you are. God knows how strong we are. But you don't. We don't. And I don't need to be reminded again, and I do need to be reminded again and again of uh, where we are growing or lacking or need help in our faith and our grace walk. Um, God knows exactly where we are. He knows our heart. He sees us from the inside out. He sees everything about us. There's nothing we can hide from him. But sometimes we will lie to ourselves. Sometimes we will try and cover things up and say, no, I'm, I'm okay. It's not a problem. I'm okay. And it's when we actually are not okay, we actually need to grow in a specific area. And that's why tests and trials are there, is to test us, to test where we are, how strong we are spiritually. Think of this. When a hurricane, hurricane or storm hits your home, you need to know what is available in terms of emergency lights, candles, water, stuff that you need for an emergency. And we need to know where to find this in our home. It is pointless having provisions, but you don't know where you place them or to scramble to have to find it when the storm is upon you and you need it. It might just be too late when we find it if we don't know where we put it. Even worse, not having any emergency provisions available when it's the storm, that's the worst. And sometimes people go through life like that. They... Um, they have nothing prepared. There's nothing in their lives. They have, they, they have no word in them. They, they're they not walking in faith. They're not walking, walking in the world, not trusting God. And then when stuff goes wrong, they wonder what's happening now. What do I have to do? Now, then they're in a panic. If trials do not produce faith, which they don't, what does produce faith? Remember, tests and trials test us. But what produces the faith? Romans 10, 17 tells us, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Supernaturally, faith is built in us as we hear, understand, trust in God's word. The more we hear the word, the more we study the word of God, the more we read it and listen to it, then our faith is built. Then our faith is built. So when the storm hits, when a trial comes, we can't stand. We won't fall. It is easy to praise God when we receive good news when things are okay, when life is good. But when things go wrong, bad news, sickness, retrenchments, etc., it is then when our faith is really being tested. And that's, that's when we need to have strong faith. Examining the Greek word for trial or temptation or test, we find the following as R.T. Kendall notes. He says that temptation comes from within, not outside, from within. A trial comes from without, external experiences or situations. The difference between testing and temptation is their moral relevance. Temptation borders on morality. A trial is mor morally neutral. I'll read it again. Temptation borders on morality, where a trial is morally neutral. Temptation touches every weak spot in my life. A trial tests our strength. Temptation can be constant, and a trial can be sudden, immediately, all of a sudden. Like temptation, you'll get tempted by something over a long period of time. It's constantly, every day, every day, every day. But a trial... Um, or a test can be happening in the next 10 minutes. It comes and goes, comes and goes. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 in the Amplified reads, For no temptation, no trial regarded as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to man. That is, 
No temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance and that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience and such as man can bear. But God is faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature and he can be trusted. That's his nature. It's he can be trusted. Not to let you be tempted and tried and assayed beyond what you are able to endure, beyond your ability and strength of resistance and the power to endure. But with the temptation, he will always, always provide you the way out, the means to escape to a landing place that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up under it patiently. When you've got some quiet time or some time, read that again. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 and Amplified. It is so powerful. It is so rich. It is so much in that little verse. In the Amplified. Now looking at the life of Job, we can see four things. Namely, God initiated the trial of Job. It wasn't the devil, it was God. He gave Job the grace to endure. God had Job pray for his friends that tried to help and console Job to receive the benefit of the trial. Strong faith, while his friends did not. So um, his friends tried to help him, and they tried to give him all kinds of uh, counseling, but it didn't help. And then God got Job to pray for his friends, to help them. That's the grace of God. He blessed Job at the end of the trial with more than what he had. Go and read it carefully. God blessed Job with more and better than what he had when it, before the trial started. Trials and tests prepare us for being trusted with more responsibility by God. Think of your child. When you teach them something, a few times they may fumble, they may mess it up, and it looks like they're not going to get it right. But eventually, the more they try, they get it right. And then the more and the better responsibility can be given to them. Next time, you're going to give them more. In any career, the same principle applies also in the kingdom of God. The more we are tested, the more we can get things right and overcome, the more God's going to give us responsibility more because we've endured the test. God has seen that we can, or we, we've, we, we showed ourselves as well that we can do or overcome that thing that was in front of us. And so our faith uh, is increased through the reading of the Word of God and listening to the Word of God, and we grow <clears throat> spiritually. In, at verse, uh, in Luke 16, verse 10 says, He who is faithful in very little thing is faithful also in much, Jesus said. And he who is dishonest or lazy or unjust in a small thing, the very least, is also dishonest and unjust also in much. Now, in adversity, we usually want God to do a removing job. Take it away. Go. I don't want this. When God wants to do an improving job, he wants to improve us, to get us better, to make us better, to be more Christ-like. That's the whole point, to make us more like Jesus. To realize the worth of an anchor or the strength of an anchor, we need to endure the storm. A ship that's out in the deep waters, we're not going to know how strong that anchor is until it hits a storm. If there's no storm, if it's just always calm water, it's no use in having an anchor. But when the storm hits and uh, the the fierce winds and your anchor is down into the uh, uh, the sand and you see, but this ship is not going anywhere, then you know that's a good anchor. Your anchor is working. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Now, very interesting. Uh, I read about an article which says in 1942, uh, two climbers uh, were part of an expedition set out to conquer Mount Everest. As far as is known, they never reached the summit. That's 1940, uh, 1924, sorry, 1924. They never reached the summit, and they never returned. Somewhere on that gigantic mountain, they were overpowered by the elements, and they died. After the failure of the expedition, the rest of the party went back home. And in London, they addressed the meeting, and one of those who returned described the ill-fated adventure and what happened. 
He returned to a huge photograph. He turned to a huge photograph of Mount Everest mounted on the wall behind him. And as he looked, he says, Everest, we tried to conquer you once, but you overpowered us. We tried to conquer you a second time, but again, you were too much for us. But Everest, I want you to know that we are going to conquer you. For you can't grow any bigger, but we can. You know, that is the essence of what faith is all about. Um, we can either grow our faith or we let our faith weaken. And we can stand up against the enemy with strong faith or we can just let the enemy run over our lives because we lack faith or we lack endurance or we don't trust God like we should. Um, that's the choice that we have. But God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is amazing. I'm going to close with this. The well-known Andrew Murray, a giant of faith as well, he's passed away many years ago. Andrew Murray said four things. One, two, four, five things. He said, first, God brought me here, and it is by his will I am in this straight place. In, in that fact, I will rest. God brought me here. Next, he will keep me here in his love and give me grace to behave as his child. Then he will make the trial a blessing, teaching me the lessons he intends me to learn and working in me the grace he means to bestow. Last, in his good time, he can bring me out again, how and when he knows. Let me say, I am here by God's appointment, in his keeping, under his training, for his time and by his grace. Amen. Every test, every trial that you face, that I face, has an end. That's a fact. An expiry date. And it may seem as though it will never end, it will never come to an end, it may seem as it will carry on for all eternity. But you know what? Here's the promise. God is faithful. His grace is more than enough. And we can rest in that fact tonight. That God is faithful. His character we can trust. And his grace is more than enough. And he will never give us something that we cannot endure or it's too much for us. That's what he said in his word. That's a promise. And as we are standing on the threshold of this new week and a new month dawning, we're going to just trust God for grace, for for his faithfulness to take us through until Jesus comes. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, tonight I just want to bring, Lord, everyone before your throne of grace that is under the sound of my voice. Those that have joined us tonight, but also those, Lord God, that will listen to this in the week. Father, and I pray for them. I pray that your anointing, your grace will be upon them with them. Father, you said in your word that when we go through a trial, when we face a test, that, Lord, that you will not give us anything that we cannot endure. And it is there so that we can see where our strength is, where our anchor is in Jesus' name. And Lord, as we listen to your word, as we read your word, as we take in your word daily, thank you that we can build our faith to endure the tests and the trials that come. And Lord, that at the end that we can stand and say, by the grace of God, we stood. And if we can hear, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the rest, into the joy of your Lord. And Father, therefore, I pray for everyone tonight, Lord, that your grace is with them, that your anointing is with them this week, going forward. But thank you, Lord, for your grace and your faithfulness. Father, thank you for every need met. Where there's healing needed, we pray for healing. Where there's salvation needed, deliverance, we pray for that. And Father, I just thank you. I call everyone blessed in Jesus' name and protected, and safe and provided for. And thank you, Father God, that as those tests and trials come, that we can look to you, Holy Spirit, as our helper and our comforter to help us and to guide us in Jesus' name. We praise you, Lord, for this. We glorify you, Father. I cover everyone with the precious blood of Jesus Christ this evening. We praise me. Thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Amen.